Hey, this video goes out to Sonu Patel, and the question is about moving averages and percentile, and this was seven days ago, so I'm so sorry I haven't been able to get to this quicker. i um, just been very busy, and so I'm going to try and cover a lot of videos uh, today and tomorrow and hopefully have heaps of new content. So the question is, where and why do I need moving average and percentile? Sorry, I found this confusing. All right, so I can't talk about percentile too much because I'm not a statistician. I can't really speak about that. However, I can talk about moving average and why we use it. All right, my background is in engineering. And when I was doing my PhD, one of the things I had to do was look at a signal, right? What's a signal? I've got a chart here. I've got time here, basically. And you got some sort of signal, right? Okay, now the example we'll choose because I got told off about this the other day, is how much I snore. So let's say this is throughout the night. This is 8 p.m., right? And this is, you know, I wake up pretty late. So let's say 8 a.m. as well, okay? And sometimes my snoring gets loud, and then sometimes it gets, you know, quieter. And then it kind of goes up and down like that, right? It's a signal. Now, you can have the same thing for a company or a business, right? So let's go into Tableau and let's do an example. So I'm going to grab something over time. Moving average usually is done over time, if not exclusively done over time. So I'm going to do something with uh, day. And we're going to bring in the sales and the profit. And what I want to do is I just want to flatten. Actually, no, I'll leave the spikes in there. And what else? Actually, we'll just do one at a time. Okay, so if I look at this, <clears throat> I have sales that I'm making every day. You know, sometimes it gets higher, sometimes it gets lower, sometimes I have big spikes in sales, right? Now, the question is, you're my employee, and I go, is, are we making more sales? Are we increasing in sales, or are we getting less? Now, from this data, it's really hard to see, okay? Is it actually going up, right? Is the average actually, you know, going this way, or is it going straight, it, it's hard to tell. So one of the things we do is we get rid of this noise, right? And the noise in this example is all these really large spikes, right? And the way you do that is by using a moving average. Now, mathematically, I uh, probably don't want to get into it too much, but if I zoom in here, I think I can, how do I zoom in here? I remember you could do this. Ah, there we go, right? So if I zoom in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some points here. And I think I can do it this way, right? So I can see little points. So what is a moving average? Okay, if I zoom in to a few points, what it does is if it takes this value, this value, right? Let's say five values. You take the average of those five values, so whatever it might be. Let's get a calculator and just do it roughly. Uh, where's my calculator? Yep. So let's say we do, you know, what is that? 10 plus 8, 50, plus 200, plus 300, plus 300, let's say. So those are the five points, and then we divide it by five. Then I get a number, 332. Okay, so then I have a, a new point. Then I move down one spot. So now I'm looking at the next set of points. One, two, three, four, five. And then I do the same calculation, right? Then I do it again. One, two, three, four, five. Five, and then I do it again. And what this does is it actually smooths out your line. Okay, so let's see this in action. Okay, let's get rid of these dots. Right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. Right, just holding control, and I'm going to add a moving average. So we go quick table and moving average. Now, what you're going to see is it's going to change. Right? Because what happens is the longer the period of moving average you take, the smoother your chart becomes. Okay, And this smooth uh, chart, if you overlay it, it gives you a kind of approximation to what's happening underneath all that data. Okay, So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to do a dual axis. I'm going to overlay the two. I'm going to change the color. I don't know why it's changed to black. Right? We do it like that. And we're also going to synchronize the axis so that they're exactly on top of one another. Right, so the blue is the moving average. Okay, And what I actually might do is I'm going to switch these around just so it's easier to see. Maybe make that red like that. Uh, I just want like a lighter color. There we go. Right, And what I'm also going to do is that 
raw data in the back. See that blue one? That's the raw data. I'm going to make that a bit lighter, right? So you can just see it, okay? And what we'll do is I'm actually, I will get rid of this point just so it kind of spreads out a bit more. We have a bit more space. Now I'm going to go in here and going to go edit table calculation. And I'm going to change the period. So remember in our example, we did five points, but you can still see it's quite rough. So the more time we take, the smoother the line becomes, right? So you can see it's getting smoother and smoother, right? All those huge jagged peaks have now disappeared because they've kind of been absorbed into the average. Now, depending on the calculation, the time span, the type of data, you'll need to adjust this to the, to the point where you think, okay, it's good enough, okay? So here, what I'm looking for is enough that I can explain it to someone, right? So let's say here, right? So you can see it's getting smoother and smoother and smoother. Right, so let's say 19, I'll stop there. Now what you'll notice is if we zoom in, right, and actually maybe I'll change the time period. Uh, oh, not that one. Let's go range of dates. All right, go all, and I'm just gonna add the filter just so I can kind of adjust as we go along. All right, let's get rid of that there. Okay, and let's say I do a smaller period of time, like so, and I don't know why this isn't spreading. Oh, automatic. Okay, there we go. That's very weird, right? So you can see it's kind of going in between the very messy part. So I can actually say, hey, listen, you know, we had a bit of a spike here, and then, you know, a little bit of a dip, a little bit of a spike, and then a little bit of a dip. It's much easier to tell that from the moving average than it is from the raw data, right? Because the raw data is just, there's just so much noise that you can't see actually what's going on. So explaining it is much easier, for example, using this one. All right, so that's kind of one of the reasons we use moving average. Professionally, um, I would do it for uh, safety related matters where you know you have X number of incidents and you wanna have like a general, well, roughly how many incidents are we having? Uh, what other reasons could I have? Yet yeah, when I was uh, doing engineering, you got signal processing, sig uh, sound, you're analyzing that kind of stuff, sales for businesses. That kind of thing stock market i've used it for stock market there's two that i know about where you have like a 200 day moving average and a 300 day moving average and basically the idea is because the stock market is so busy it looks like this you're trying to go well what's what's it trying to do overall so by doing a really really long moving average 200 days or 300 days you can actually do all sorts of like predictive modeling and assumptions so that's kind of an idea of what you can use moving average for all right, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.